Every living organism on this planet, be it a bacteria, amoeba, fungi, plant, insect, or animal, has some sort of what I would call a nervous system or response to stimuli, and some sort of a digestive system or the ability to, met to metabolize. And the connection between the two is highly evolved. I mean, in every living organism. So, in fact, for Christmas, I asked for a model of the nervous, or a model of the brain and a model of the digestive system. And my friends got it for me. My mom got me an Xbox. <laughs> I'm just kidding, she didn't even get me that. My mom got me vision therapy. <laughs> so I could do an entire presentation about the gut-brain axis, or how the gut and the brain are related. But I'm going to try to sum it up pretty quickly. Now, many neurotransmitters, including serotonin, melatonin, and GABA, are all found in the, in the gut. It's called the uh, enteric nervous system. And actually, 90% of the body's total serotonin is found and produced in the gut. So, it's Enteric nervous system, second brain are both, are both names for it. And with 100 million neurons, that, that amount of neurons is comparable with how many neurons are in the spinal cord. So even before we had data to show all of this, we use it in language all the time. Like gut feelings, or my favorite, butterflies in the stomach while you're standing up giving a speech. This isn't really about the gut, but I thought it was pretty funny. It says, the human brain starts working the moment you're born and never stops until you stand up to speak in public. <laughs> so when you're dealing with an inflamed gut, you're dealing with an inflamed brain, and here's why. So about nine months after my brain injury, I had a blood test done, and it showed that I had low protein levels which didn't make sense to me because I had a protein shake every morning. I ate meat with every meal. Basically, what might have happened is after the brain injury, communication to my gut, to my, to my body in general, but to my gut especially, was uncoordinated. And with the, the communication between the brain and the gut uncoordinated, it essentially created intestinal permeability, where food particles were able to cross the intestinal lining into the portal vein undigested. Now, normally, foods are broken down into peptides, glucose, fatty acids, vitamins, minerals, or other particles that the blood can recognize and transport throughout the body. So what happens when a whole food particle enters the blood is the blood doesn't recognize it. And it acts the same way it would act if you had a splinter, by creating an immune, an, an immune response and sending inflammatory cytokines to the area. Now, cytokines are known as immunomodulating agents. They're shown to be released from cells into the blood, blah, <laughs> into the blood when there is an immune response or inflammation. So, Evidence shows the passage of cytokines across the blood-brain barrier, BBB, occurs and could potentially affect brain function. So this means that inflammation anywhere in your body can cross the blood-brain barrier, which may inflame the brain. And when the brain is inflamed, output is reduced. So communication with the gut is less coordinated. When communication with the gut is less coordinated, the intestinal lining is more permeable, which allows more food particles to make it through, which causes an immune response, sends cytokines to the area, which cross the blood-brain barrier, inflame the brain, diminish communication. It's a vicious cycle that exacerbates itself. So the way to handle this, the first thing to do is to address the gut. Take me to a doctor.
Someone take me to the horse.